Today I want to show you how I put together this DIY off-grid lighting system for the off-grid workshop. And the whole goal here was to come up with something that I could use with just the battery. Instead of actually having to turn on the inverter, I want to just go direct to the battery and that way I don't have the power loss from the inverter as well. It's directly off DC, either 12 or 24 volt. And the goal was to see if I could get it put together relatively cheap and have it actually be effective enough to be able to use in the off-grid workshop. I've got four bulbs running off 24 volts battery right now. Let me shut them off and I'll show you what it's like without them. And then back on and you can kind of get an idea how effective they are. It's really hard to show lighting on a video and how effective it really is. This runs off of 24 volts currently, and I'm only using just under 2 amps for these four bulbs. If I was to run this off of 12 volts, it'd be double that around 4 amps to run all four bulbs, about, a, about an amp per bulb. It was all kind of an experiment just to see if it was going to work. I'll show you all of the parts and pieces that I used to put this together. I'll leave you links for everything in the, in the video description in case you're interested in trying something like this for yourself. Or maybe if nothing else, this video will give you some inspiration for your own off-grid lighting system to run just off of a 12-volt battery or a 24-volt battery. First item I'm using is one of these four socket pennant hanging light cords and it comes with wiring, sockets, switches, and the whole bit there. But you will be limited as you'll see later with the installation. This is made for AC 110 volts, but I'm going to modify it to work with the 12 or 24 volt DC power. Next is the 12 and 24 volt lights. These fit in a regular light socket, but they're designed to run off of 12 or 24 volts. On 12 volts, they'll pull about one amp and 24 volts, they'll pull about a half an amp per bulb. And I bought some of these paper lanterns and they come in all different sizes. I I bought a package of 10 10 inch paper lanterns in the white color and this will act as a diffuser to give just a little bit softer light. You're going to need some type of connectors. This is a package I bought a while back and I've used it on several projects. Different size connectors, blade connectors, and uh, that sort of thing for connecting your switch. I use one of these switches because I had it left over from a previous project, and they're affordable. And then you're going to need some copper wiring. This is 14 2 gauge, 100 foot package here. I may get one of these and use it in the future to reposition some of the lights into uh, different locations within the workshop. Some ring connectors, and I like these 3 8 inch stud connectors. These will work with most 12 and 24 volt batteries. One other thing you're going to need and consider if you're connecting directly to a battery is an inline fuse. And I'm using one of these inline fuse holders for blade fuses. I had some leftover 14 gauge wire scrap from a previous project and I've built this wiring harness with some ring connectors to connect to the battery. I've got my switch incorporated into it and then this will connect to the pendant lighting harness to make the complete system. If you're going to extend these wires or to connect this to a battery, in order to run the 12 volt or 24 volt LED light bulbs, you need to determine whether the uh, outside case or the center pin on the socket, which one is positive. I want mine to be the uh, center pin positive. Some LED bulbs are sensitive to polarity and some are not, but I'm going to make that center pin in the bottom positive and the side case negative. So to determine that, first I'm going to cut off the plug end, and that way I can get to the bare wires, and I'll hit each one of those with my tester. Looks like they're color coded. One wire is black and one wire is white. I'll use my meter. When those two pins touch, I've got continuity. So I need to hold this on the center pin with one hand. 
and then touch each one of these wires and find out which one is which. Okay, the center one is black in my wiring. So that's what I'm going to connect to my positive wire coming from the battery. And just to verify, I'll hold the uh, tester on the sidewall. This should be the white. And it is. So black is center. Now that I have the harness I built soldered and connected with heat shrink to the actual uh, pendant harness, I want to just double check it with the positive that connects to the battery and with one of the sockets to make sure that center pin is the positive. So same as the test before with continuity on the meter here. You do have to make sure that if you have inline switches that they're turned on and make sure that uh, if you have this type of socket that has a switch on it, make sure it's turned on as well. So if I connect this to the, let's see, positive, see if I can get that connect, I should be able to touch that center pin and get the beep. So I know I'm connected properly and just as a test, let's check the negative with this outer case of the socket. Make sure we get a beep there. Ready to connect this and hook it up. Ooh, that's bright. I'm going to crank these volts up to uh, 24 volts. And I haven't noticed any difference in the brightness of the bulb at 24 volts versus 12 volts or 13 volts. But I did notice it cuts the amperage in half. This is currently at uh, 3.5 amps to run all four bulbs. But let's turn the uh, voltage up to 24 volts. And I didn't notice any brightness change in the bulbs. 1.75 amps for four bulbs at 24 and a half volts. Drop that back down to about 13 volts. 3.5 amps for four bulbs. So that's pretty low draw. 47 watts to run these four bulbs on 13 and a half volts DC power. All right, looks like you just a couple loops on one side and nothing on the other. Just expand the ball and put this down in it. Pointy ends here that go in these loops. And it kind of acts like a spring inside there creating some pressure to keep the ball expanded. That does cut down the harshness of the bulb, but it's still pretty bright and it spreads the light out. That's going to be the lighting in the off-grid workshop. And this is a 24 volt, 25 amp hour battery. Now this isn't going to be ideal in my situation because I have a 12 volt setup on the solar system. I cannot charge 12 and 24 at the same time. So I won't be able to charge this off the, off the solar. But they did send an AC 24 volt lithium ion battery charger along with this battery. It comes with the charger, an AC plug, and then two extensions with a huge uh, connector here in order to do either alligator clips to your battery. And what I'm going to do is use this system, which is just a plug-in. So you can, you can permanently connect this to your battery. Maybe your battery is hard to access or something. You can connect this to your battery. And then all you have to do is plug this in. And that'll set it up to charge your battery. 
And then what I'll do is I'll use the AC outlet on my 3000 watt Renogy inverter to charge this battery. Now this light setup on 24 volts is pulling about two amps for all four bulbs. So with this 25 amp hour battery, I should be able to get roughly around 12 hours of lighting. So periodically I'll have to plug this charger into the inverter and charge this battery. So I may have to only charge this once or twice a week, depending on how often I use the lights and how long I have them running. So I'm still using solar to charge it, but I'm going a roundabout way through the inverter. I've got this blade fuse in here with a 5 amp. Let's turn the lights on. Real nice bright lights. And I'll just set this on the tray on my portable solar stand and it'll go right down there with the other 12 volt battery for the main system. As I get a chance to work with these lights, it's going to be interesting to see how they hold up and how well they perform, but so far I think it's looking pretty promising. Click the video on the screen now for another video of the DIY off-grid workshop project, and we'll see you over there.